What's up, friends? I am on my way to visit my family in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm all by myself, which means that I get to stop whenever and wherever I want to pick along the way. So come along with me. Okay, I'm here in Conway, Arkansas. I'm at my first stop. There is a place here called the Junction Flea Market that I'm gonna check out. And I'm lucked out right next door to it. There's also a Salvation Army. So we're gonna pop into both of these real quick and see what we can find. So fun fact, I used to live in Conway, Arkansas. Lived here for six years, I believe. Had my first kid here. So none of this was here when I lived here. It's very different. So but anyway, it's been kind of fun to stop and uh, just see a different part of town. So I have a sale coming up that I'm doing on Instagram with a couple other vintage sellers and it's going to be spring themed and so that's really what I'm looking for is some stuff that I can pull together for a nice vignette for that sale and there's definitely a lot here I'm just gonna take a little bit of time to pick through. Do you ever find yourself in a place where it's kind of overwhelming? There's just so much to look through. That's how I felt when I was here. Maybe it's just because I was kind of in a rush trying to get to Memphis. I did buy these milk glass pieces, six bucks a piece, not a bad price. I used to be able to find these for a dollar or two at the thrift store, but they are getting a little bit harder to find. I don't know, let me know what you think about milk glass and if you can still find it in your area. This vendor had 50% off. And as I look at this video, honestly, I'm seeing a lot of stuff that I probably should have looked at closer. Again, there was just so much. I did spot this cute little trivet over here. It was $8, so it would have been four. But that's a nice little decorative piece. These glasses were cute. I love the painted daisies on them. Really fun for spring. This is cute. $8. And it's got these, this is love birds. Okay, a couple of things I found. I don't think I'm gonna take this with me, um, but an old cake tin. It's marked down to 18. It's an old Nesco. I can't get it open. And that's really probably the main reason why I'm gonna pass on it. Plus, um, all the wording is off the front, but not a bad piece. And then these down here, I love. These are Shenango China, uh, which is a restaurant wear brand, and it is a set of plates, 23. And just look at the gorgeous colors on those. One, two, three, four, five of those. So pretty. I have some other Shenango pieces, um, some mugs that I have for sale and some plates in my booth, but I really like this pattern on these. Right, not a bad stop. That place had some really great items. R pretty fair prices overall. Wish I would have had more time to look. I'm running late now and I need to really get going, but ran to a viewer. That's always exciting. So if you ever happen to see me out, be sure to say hi. That's super fun. I'm going to keep going though. We're going to get the rest of the way to Memphis. So welcome to Corinth, Mississippi. That's where we are and a shop called Sanctuary Antiques. It looks really nice inside. Let's go check it out. So I think you can probably tell by the footage that this was a higher end antique and interior design store. It was absolutely gorgeous. Of course, most of the items were out of our budget, but I did see a lot of beautiful European imported furniture, like all of these gorgeous pieces right here. I also noticed there was just a lot of bright colors and a lot of pastels, definitely kind of that chinoiserie look that's popular down in the South. 
And there was also a lot of hunting themed art. So hunting dogs and birds, that seems to be coming back in style. Stop number two, this place looks a little bit more our style. That last store was gorgeous, but definitely out of our budget. This is the open market. I think it's gonna be a great place. Let's go in and see. So again, this is the open market in Corinth, Mississippi. It was a great mall, great selection, and huge. This vendor here had 30% off. You know I love a sale whenever I can spot one. And she had a lot of these really thicker, chunky, I'm calling them restaurant wear types of pieces. You know, they're just older, they're heavy. Um, most of them are white. Sometimes they have a little bit of coloring on them. She had some that are green rimmed and blue and red. I'm just been a little bit into those types of pieces lately. One, they're easier to ship, I think, because they're just sturdier, but they also just kind of have that chunky farmhouse feel, and she had a nice selection here in her booth. Also in her booth, I spotted one of these really old puzzles. I definitely took that home with me. Great price, and I'll show it to you later on when we get to the haul. Sometimes y'all, as I'm putting the voiceover onto these videos, I kind of kick myself for not buying what I'm sitting here watching. And that is the case with this Blue Willow set. It was marked down to $25 for all of it. I did not buy it. Honestly, I don't know why. That was a great price for all of those pieces. And these old spools are always fun. I liked the green color on that one. This one was 35, a little bit more than what I wanted to pay, but don't you just love that chippy green paint. This vendor was another one of my favorites. She had a lot to look through in her booth. And you know the thing that I loved the most was that look at how big and easy to find those tags are. It was so easy to see what her prices were on everything, which made it really easy for me as a shopper. And she kept things kind of organized by color and style. Again, just really easy to look through everything that she had. There's some nice white pieces, some false graph. I spot a little stoneware bowl there, maybe an ironstone platter back there in the back. So over here she had some vintage vanity pieces, some makeup containers, this box right here. I believe it says that it's circa 1890s. It was really beautiful. And then this set that's kind of next to it, that other gold set with the fabric trim. Y'all help me, help me figure out exactly what that is. Is that like a notepad and maybe a pencil holder? She had it at 15, it was marked down. It's not really my style, but I thought it was kind of cool, but I'd love to know your thoughts on what you think that is. Funny, like we're definitely more in the south than where I live and I'm seeing so much more um, bright colorful Asian antiques and the chinoiserie look which I really caught some flack for that video that I made last year because I had people telling me that's not in style at all where I live but if you are in the south then it 100% is because it's all over this mall <laughs> and it was all over the last place we were at too so that may be more of a regional thing, but it is definitely still very popular here in Corinth, Mississippi. All right, check this out, you guys. It was kind of buried down here. <laughs> it is a little tiny potty chair, but I think it's kind of amazing. It would fold up and look at how chippy it is. It's $15. I think it's really pretty cool. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. I 
I was super excited to spot at this little kid's toy piano. Yes, it's kind of in a rough shape, but you guys know I'm a sucker for anything in miniature. And so this for sure did come home with me. And then again, as I'm watching this, like I spy that Fima Deruta pot up there with the yellow dragon. You guys see that? That's a great Italian pottery piece and I totally missed it while I was filming this. Sometimes I just get distracted filming and I'm not really paying attention to what's on the shelf. So have to do better at that. All right, this is our last stop. I am about out of money because I've spent more than I was expecting to spend. So I found some great stuff. We are at these antiques and collectibles. We're gonna head in and see what she's got. If you find yourself anywhere near Selmer, Tennessee, I definitely recommend that you stop in to these antiques and collectibles. And no, they are not sponsoring this video. We just had a great time at their store. The owners were incredibly friendly very very welcoming accommodating we had a great time talking to them and they had a really nice selection of items some higher end items and then this whole area too where everything was like 40 percent off and it was more kind of digging through junk so a great place to come they also showcased this local artist look at his beautiful art i keep saying that i want to buy some original art and start an original art collection honestly some of these pieces would have been a great place to start spot in it but still when you get that when they're that old they tried to take the good they there's the tag on it like 25 that seems to be a building price doesn't it it's a good shape it's a nice weight 30 yeah, it's got yeah, the it's cotton thing. Unless you want to, you know, you want to try and sell it for. It's like a, it would be more probably like a cut or quilt. Yeah. Or a lot of people just like them to put out there, you know, look at them. They don't want to use them. Uh, this is, this is muslin. This is very old. This is real old. Yeah, I've already got one kind of cutter one that I've. like a little milking stool and it's made out of bird's eye maple. It was time to wrap up our shopping trip. We had been out for two full days, but I really did enjoy my time in West Tennessee. I've got some fantastic finds that I'm gonna show you in the second half of the video. But on my way home, I did take a pit stop and spent a couple days in Memphis proper with my dad and a little bit of footage from something exciting that happened there too. Florida Atlantic storm back to win its first NCAA tournament. <laughs> oh, I haven't forgotten here in Memphis a timeout before a jump ball can be called. Yes, there she is. <laughs> yeah, the backside of the shirt. 
So I'm back from my trip to West Tennessee and it's time to share you guys the haul, all the items that I brought home. I did have an awesome trip. I had a great time with my mom, kind of seeing that area of town where she lives that I hadn't seen before. And of course I had a super fun time with my dad at the basketball game. Thank you for indulging me and in my clips of when <laughs> I made it onto TV. If you don't know that University of Memphis basketball is one of my other main passions in life, it is. So it was a lot of fun, great time. And really that's one of my goals this year is to try and get out of Northwest Arkansas for some more picking trips. Honestly, I haven't had the best luck finding true vintage items here lately. So that was just a lot of fun. So most, if not all of this is headed straight into my online store. In fact, as we speak, I'm working on a really large sale that's going to be happening tomorrow, uh, tomorrow as of the filming of this right now. I'm going to be hosting that in my online store and I'm collaborating with 11 other sellers on Instagram. So I'm kind of trying that to see if I can really drive some traffic to my online shop. If you watched my last video, I talked about how in my booth space, I'm transitioning away a little bit from vintage, not all the way, but that's just not really what the customer base at this mall is shopping for. And I'm kind of trying to figure that out. So I'm trying some more new home decor wholesale items in my booth space and the true vintage stuff that I'm finding. Most of that, I'm kind of funneling that into my online store first. So anyway, let's get started going through the stuff that we found. So on my way to Memphis, I made a pit stop first in Conway, Arkansas, and we used to live there for a while. So it was kind of fun to go see some places that I hadn't seen in a while and stopped at a thrift store in an antique mall there. That is where I found this amazing vintage Afghan. Um, you guys saw that in the video, paid a couple bucks for it. I love it so much. And I think I'm going to hold on to it, maybe put it in with some other red, white, and blue items that I'm collecting for like a 4th of July sale. Cause this just obviously red, white, and blue, even though in the summer, like I know that necessarily maybe people aren't buying Afghans, but the colors are just too perfect to kind of not theme it around that. And then I also found this amazing piece right here. And I don't know a ton about it, except that it is French and it is a numbered art piece um, that has a French maker. A couple examples of this online that I found were going for very pricey. <laughs> so gotta look around a little bit more it just something about it kind of caught my eye. I thought it was pretty. Once I made my way into Memphis and then out into the Pickwick Lake area, my mom and I went to Corinth, Mississippi. So just cross the border right there down south. And we went to a large antique mall that was there. And that is where I found all of these gorgeous quilts. So I've kind of been on a quilt kick lately, you guys. I don't know a ton about them. I'll be the first to admit that but I'm trying to learn. So a couple months ago, I found two quilts at an estate sale here in Northwest Arkansas, and they sold for me like that. Since then, I have not been able to find any that have been affordable and in decent shape. So when I saw these out shopping with my mom, I was super excited about them. I'm really trying to stock more of these to kind of grow that part of my business and to learn more about them. So I snatched all four of these up and spent a little more money than I typically would. So I paid anywhere from 40 to $160 for these quilts, which is maybe overpaying a little bit more than what I would usually spend on something. But again, I'm just not finding any of them here. So grabbed them while I was there. They're gorgeous. I love them so much. And they're all going in the big sale that I'm doing tomorrow. At that big antique mall, I also grabbed this whole stack of dishes. They are a pattern called Forget Me Not. The whole stack I think was $6, which is an incredible price. They're going in my spring sale tomorrow. And then this stack of plate and dishes here also came from that location. These are some Homer Laughlin uh, kind of restaurant wear pieces. A nice little set of three right here. And then this piece is just kind of again a chunky kind of restaurant wear platter, another Homer Laughlin piece. Because these are red, white, and blue, I'm going to hold on to them for the 4th of July. I also grabbed there this vintage puzzle. I've never seen one like this before. I thought it was really neat though. And I like kind of how thick and chunky all of the pieces are. Just interesting. I have no idea if they're all in the box and I'm certainly not going to try 
and put them all together because look at, they're kind of funky. And then of course the little tiny piano. Let's move this guy so you can see it. Remember seeing this probably in the footage. I'm a sucker for anything miniature. So this needs to be cleaned up a little bit. I'm probably going to put some hemp oil on it to try and fix some of the scratches and stuff that are on it. It is missing a couple keys, but for me, it is just a super cute decor piece. Something that you saw on the footage while I was out shopping was that kind of chippy paint uh, little kid's potty chair. I did not bring that home with me. My mom vetoed it. She said, eh, that's dumb. You don't need to buy that. She was like, why would you want that? And I just love the paint on it. I thought it was cute. I thought it could make a really cute planter for someone, but she talked to me out of it. So I'm curious to know if, is that something that you would have bought? Like, let me know in the comments. Are you team mom? Do you agree with her? Melanie, that was dumb. Or are you team vintage potty chair? Would you have picked that up? I'm curious to see. I also grabbed this really great basket. It was $10 at that flea market. It's gonna go in my spring sale. Great, great shape, really nice and sturdy. Would be pretty with some greenery in it. Real flowers, faux flowers, stacked with some vintage plates. It's a really cute piece. And then I did purchase this old flag from a vendor at that flea market in Corinth. Now, I do wanna say that I understand um, but there's differing opinions on old flags. And so here's mine. To me, these are pieces of history and they're to be treasured and they're to be honored. So um, I don't find them hardly ever, but when I do find them, I do try and preserve them and help get them into the hands of people that are gonna treasure and honor them. So I know some people don't really like the idea of old flags as decor and that's fine. I wanna give you the freedom. You know, if you don't feel good about that, then that's okay. But I do see them as a way to kind of treasure, honor the flag, and honor them as history. This one, um, I paid $22 for it. It does have some staining and a couple small holes in it. But I think it's beautiful, and I'm excited about having it again, kind of holding on to it for a 4th of July themed vignette. All right, now let me tell you about a place that we stopped that I didn't get to take any footage, but I want to give it a shout out. It is a store called Old Charlie's and it is in Kuntz, Tennessee, or maybe it's pronounced Counts. Honestly, I'm not really sure, but it's a little tiny town right there by Lake Pickwick. I couldn't take any footage that day because my mom wasn't doing super well. I actually had to push her in the wheelchair while we were shopping. And so trying to film and do the wheelchair, it just wasn't working really great. But I got to meet Charlie himself, the namesake of the store. And he was so fun. He was so friendly, great to talk to. If you're in that area, you definitely should stop. They have some fantastic vendors, some really, really great items, and a really fun uh, kind of ice cream vintage, you know, soda bar that was there. I just loved it. I thought it was great. So at Old Charlie's, that's where I found this vintage sheep tin. Now this one is not a super old one. Um, the really old ones are hinged. This one's not. It's probably just from the 90s maybe, but it's got that cute look, great for Easter, a nice piece. And I also got these gorgeous vintage prints there. So this one is absolutely stunning. The arched frame on it is what sold me. So I paid 25 for it, which was a very fair price. It's getting harder and harder for me to find vintage art. I don't know why I used to find it everywhere. I think it's just getting snatched up. So when I can find a great piece, I buy them. This piece I also purchased from a vendor at Old Charlie's. It's these beautiful pink carnations. Isn't that pretty? Frame's got some damage on it, but I really don't care. Again, vintage art, hard to find. The star of the show there really though is this old ice cream bucket. It is an Arctic freeze ice cream bucket and it is complete. It has everything with it. It was marked down to $48. And so I grabbed it for that price because I'm still quite confident that there's a good bit of money I can make on it. Love, love, love the color. Most of all, this pretty teal blue color is really what sold me on it. Lastly, at Old Charlie's is also where I grabbed these vintage postcards. A gentleman had a ton of them. They're all unmarked in these pretty sleeves. I just sifted through and grabbed four or five of my favorite ones, and they're gonna go in my spring sale tomorrow. So I made a pit stop along the way as I was heading back into Memphis. Real quick, there was this place on the side of the road, had an open sign, said junk, went in. <laughs> Didn't get any footage while I was in there shopping, but grabbed a couple of these old hymnals. This one says Treasured Verses 1954. Not really a hymnal, it's more of just kind of like a pamphlet some poetry, 
And then these are from uh, convention songs, the American Farm Bureau Association, it says. So 1948 and 1951. Y'all, I just love old paper. I love that, you know, these people were using these. They were gathering together. These are songs that they would sing. Just think that's really fun. So all in all, you guys, I'm really happy with my trip. Not only did I get to see my family, I got to hang out at an awesome Memphis basketball game. I got to find some great items. I want to say in total, I spent a little over $500, which is a lot for me to spend kind of in one chunk of time. But my thought was, I'm not there all the time. I'm not going to be able to get back and get these items. Honestly, there's a few things that I didn't purchase that now I'm kind of kicking myself and wish that I would have. So we'll see where my $500 investment goes. We'll see if I'm able to turn that into more. I do think I'm going to be able to. I think these are some awesome items. I hope you guys enjoyed picking with me in West Tennessee. The next time I head out, I'll take you back along with me. Y'all are awesome. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again soon.